brother, oh brother, oh brother. Welcome. Whoa, 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 whoa. Welcome back to another show of the Matt Kay Show. Another episode, another installment, another part of the series, if you will, another chronicle, dare I say it, of the Matt Core Show. I'm happy you are here early this morning. And hopefully it's a fun day in the market. I don't know if you've seen it. I just tweeted it out, but Bitcoin's ripping right now. So if you're a crypto investor, Bitcoin and really Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, the classics that people have been paying attention to over the past couple of weeks really have been moving, moving, moving. So that's some exciting stuff. That's awesome. That's dope. Uh, so I want to talk about that. Uh, we actually, in terms of the crypto news for the day, there's a new analyst coming out with $160,000 price target on Bitcoin. I have an update on the whole spot Bitcoin ETF. And then also talking about meme coins, there's a new one based on the Avalanche Network. And this one is, I, it's C-O-Q, I believe it's pronounced Cock, uh, the Cock Inu coin. And it's just another meme coin. And this one's a chicken, a rooster, a hen, whatever it is. Uh, and that one, apparently in the past two weeks, someone has turned $450, $450 into over $2 million. And that's in the past two weeks. Absolutely astounding. So I want to cover that. A little bit of degeneracy going on in the world of crypto. And then also what I would consider it to be some legitimate crypto bitcoin ethereum update so we're going to be covering that probably after the market opens before the market opens i want to talk about what's going on in the s p 500 and the nasdaq uh just a little bit shaky right now potentially a little bit of volume exhaustion so i want to get into that i want to do some technicals i want to give you all the macroeconomic updates for the day at 10 a.m we're going to get a consumer confidence report and also an existing home sales report so at 10 a.m that's going to be coming down the pipeline. Uh, over the past couple of days, really over the past 24 hours, there's been some crazy political news. So not only just talking about what's going on with the Houthi in the Red Sea, the militant group sponsored by Iran. So we're going to get into that and the potential impact on energy, oil, really. And we see oil popping right now. It's back up to 75 a barrel, recently rallying about 6 $7 a barrel. Uh, but also U.S. political stage, we have some crazy updates with Colorado and kicking Trump off the ballot and all that good stuff. So I just want to give you an update there. Just it does seem important to be informed about that type of stuff. Uh, from there, individual equity updates. Uh, FedEx just reported their earnings. I'm going to let you know about the other earnings to pay attention to for this week. Speaking of this week, I want to give a little bit more of an update on the classic Santa Claus rally. I was in the Discord myself this morning and we were talking about what it is, what it isn't. And I think I might have been a little bit wrong. I always thought about the Santa Claus rally to be the generic upward push from about halfway through October till about halfway through January. And apparently there's a more defined definition of Santa Claus rally, which is basically the really the final five days of December and the first two trading days of January. So we're going to get into some of the historic results of that. Um, it's going to be a fun show. Market. Being honest right now, looking at the EMAs, looking at what was going on in options yesterday, looking at the volume from yesterday, it might need a little bit of a breather here. I don't want to be a negative Nancy. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but it looks like maybe a little bit of a breather, potentially because a bit of profit taking. So that's what's going on on the equity side, but we're still seeing quite a bit of strength in the world of commodities such as gold. So we'll be talking about that and some other precious metals, silver, palladium, all that good jazz. Uh, crypto's looking amazing. And I also want to talk a little bit about bonds, which are looking good because yields continue to fall and fall and fall. That's what we're doing today. Am I speaking at a million miles per hour? Yes. Did I have 18 coffees already this morning? Yes. Why is that all happening? Well, as you can tell, I am once again wearing my lucky shirt. You might be thinking to yourself, Matt, three shows in a row, why are you continuing to wear your lucky shirt? Why are you wearing the same shirt? Are you okay? Do you not know how to do laundry? Folks, I know how to do laundry. The issue is, is I cannot take this shirt off because it is my, my lucky rabbit's foot, if you will. Today is day three of a trading challenge for me. Basically, it's a 20-day trading challenge. If you don't know what's going on, you got to watch some of the old streams. But let me give you the TLDR. I am in a trading challenge that has $160,000 on the line. And there's certain tranches within it. Like you could lock in 40K, you could lock in 80K. And then if you're lucky, you could get another 80. But those are kind of minuscule details. What you need to know is two things need to happen. I need to trade for 20 days 
And in all reality, I need to make about somewhere between 80 and $92,000 in those 20 trading days. That's what's going on. That's that. That's where we're at. We're on day three of it. Day one went well. Day two went well. We are starting off day three. And when I think of the fact that even if I do well today, I still have like 17 more. It's a bit daunting. That's a lot of days to have perfect trading. The way my system set up is there's basically no room for error. So I'm taking super high accuracy trades and just pay, praying that a bad beat doesn't happen within really that 20 day trading period that I'm choosing to execute all these trades. So will it? I don't know. The odds are kind of in my favor, kind of not in my favor. They're definitely not in my favor if I become undisciplined. But day one, I was able to pull a rabbit out of the hat. Day two, I was able to pull a rabbit out of the hat. We are now on day three. And it is, like I just said, daunting to focus on how much more money you have to make, how many more days I have to trade. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to focus on doing exactly what I need to today. My goal today is basically not to blow it up. I would like to make somewhere between four and $700 on all 20 accounts, like individually. And that will give me into a good, a good position really for the remainder of the week. I'm just going to slow and steady slow and steady and that's kind of why i'm speaking at a million miles per hour because i'm very very nervous about it i don't know why i've historically had much more money on the line than i do right now but it's just something about the competition something about the competitive juices are flowing because not only do i want the money of course i want the money i want all the money but i think it's kind of weird to put yourself out there and be like yo i'm doing this competition like just to call out that you're attempting, attempting to pull something off and you know there's like a decent chance of failure. And then really, if I do fail, that means thousands of people watch me fail. So I think there's like a heightened, I guess, risk related to the brand, uh, the DJ and Matt Coors brand with this one. So I think, I don't know, I was doing some journaling on my trades every single day. I write down my trades, my emotions, my entries, my exits, my reasoning, and I've been really, really consistent with the trades. Like I have all my trades for the day already written down. None of this is like gut feel stuff. It's I know what I'm getting in. I know what I'm getting out and I know what levels. Uh, so the trade itself, I'm trying to be systematic. I'm trying to be robotic. I'm trying to be algorithmic with it. But what's going a million miles per hour, what's exactly getting whips all to the upside to the downside is like my emotional state. And I don't know, maybe it's because I'm still early into the challenge and maybe like as the days continue, maybe as I consume less caffeine, maybe things will, I don't know, settle out a little bit. But hey, that's what we're doing the show for. We will figure this out. How much espresso have you had this morning? All of it. All of it. You, if you, wherever you are in the world, you, if you go out and try to buy espresso, you're not going to find it. They're going to be like, yeah, some guy in a Buffalo shirt, uh, bought us all out this morning. I consumed all the espresso in the world this morning. Uh, and that's why I'm like, literally, it feels as if I'm speaking to you from already in the future. That's how fast things are moving right now. Like, I think I'm somehow breaking the like space time continuum and like speaking to you from the future and that's just like how fast things are going right now i honestly think that if einstein were still alive and he was watching what was going on right now it would just blow his mind of like just the concept of physics and having this much energy and like i'm creating wormholes from now into the present but also back into the past like it's just getting crazy it's just absolutely getting crazy but anyway folks before that all happens as stated for the past two training days i would love to get basically two to three trades in before 10, 10, 15 in the morning. Uh, for my particular strategy, it does work considerably better in the earlier session and in the very late session. Midday gets a little bit too choppy, a little bit too messed up. So I'm focusing on placing my trades very, very early because that's when I stream. Um, yesterday, I saw some good opportunities uh, a little bit later in the day. So I traded that with the Discord. But really, the name of the game is I have to trade 20 days, have to, and I also have to make about 56 units of profit. As of now, I've made about 15. So I'm about 41 to go, 40 to 41. It's about 15 and a half units. So basically, let's just call it 41. I have 41 units to go. And really, I have 18 trading days to go. So that's what's on the clock right now for what has to be going down. Um, so that's the update day three of the trading competition. And with that being said, let's actually give you guys an update of everything going on in the charts, the economy, all that good jazz. So as you can see here, top left of your screen, this is the ETF tracking the S&P 500, the SPY, looking a bit weak right now, looking a bit heavy. But please remember, this is pre-market trading. Obviously, it's very low volume trading, kind of lower volatility trading. 
So let's wait till the market actually opens to see how the big players are positioning themselves. Similar situation in the NASDAQ, which hit an all-time high yesterday. So in the past week, week and a half, you have the Dow hitting an all-time high, the NASDAQ hitting an all-time high, the S&P 500 is within spinning distance of hitting an all-time high, and the Russell 2000, the small cap sector, is nowhere close to hitting an all-time high. Obviously, you also might notice on your screen that Bitcoin is ripping, almost just tagged 44,000. I've been calling this out for the past couple of days of just saying, hey man, the chart, the daily chart looking real good for Bitcoin might be looking at a breakout. I thought it would come yesterday. It obviously got delayed by one day and that's what we're seeing in real time right now. And then obviously when Bitcoin's running, we know there are certain equities that are going to be a big beneficiary such as Coin, Mara, Riot. And that's why you see Coin up 1.64% right now. Obviously a new 52 week high. Sock future slide after Dow notches nine day winning streak. U.S. stock short sellers down 145 billion in 2023. So you know all those people who were like guaranteeing us that the market was going to collapse and they were calling for doomsday. I'm talking about Burry, Gade. I don't know. There's like a whole list of people who are like the market's gonna die. Well, it cost them a cool 145 billion. And this is as I've preached to many of you historically. This don't let yourself get in the way of a good trade. Just because you have a, I don't know, a hardcore prediction doesn't mean it's going to be right. Go with the flow. Most likely, none of us in here are going to be a big enough trader to actually influence the market. We just aren't trading with enough size. So it's generally better just to be going with the direction of the whales. And obviously, ever since late October till now, the whales have been going up and up and up, getting ready for Santa Claus. So why would we bet against them? Speaking of that, uh, talking about the Santa Claus rally, like I alluded to a bit ago, uh, I was always under the impression that the Santa Claus rally was generically for this time frame, mid-October to mid-January. The market tends to go up and up and up historically over that time period. Well, according to the Traders Almanac, it actually has a bit different of a definition. The truly accurate definition, according once again to the Traders Almanac, is the five days to conclude the year and the first two trading days of the new calendar year. So for this particular year, 2023, leading into 2024, the Santa Claus rally is this seven-day trading period here from the 22nd, this Friday, to Wednesday of January 3rd, obviously, of the new year. So just want to bring that up to you. If you want some stats and figures from the 1950s up to 2022, this has been a bullish period just below 80% of the time, like 79.8 or something like that. But basically think 80% of the time. So four out of five years from the 22nd, or really the final five days of the year and the first two days of the next year, because it doesn't always perfectly align with the calendar dates like this. The final five days, the new, the newest two days. So basically this seven day period, uh, the Bulls have won that period 80% of the time. Every four out of five years, they seem to win. So is it a guarantee? Absolutely not. I just want to tell you how things have played out historically. Big update of some of the global news that we were covering. Over 100 container ships reroute as U.S. weighs Red Sea response. Uh, more than 100 container ships are taking the long route around Africa to avoid violence in the Red Sea. Remember, that's just to the east of Egypt and just to the west of Saudi Arabia. Uh, creating extra costs and delays as the U.S. Way, weighs up how to respond to the latest theft on the global economy. 103 container vessels are rerouting from the Red Sea around Africa. Companies are also starting to look to use rail and air routes instead of waterways that carry 12% of global trade is deemed too perilous to pass. So we're just seeing a lot of shift. They used to be coming right here where my cursor is. This is the Red Sea. And as you can tell now, they're taking this long trip around Africa, opposed to coming up through the Red Sea. Uh, and that is uh, because of the Houthi militant group sponsored by Iran, causing a little bit of a ruckus, I would say, within the Red Sea. Other global news, but this is a little bit more impactful to the U.S., but I think still globally would get a bit of traction. It was announced yesterday that the former President Trump is barred from Colorado ballot in unprecedented ruling. Donald Trump is ineligible to serve as U.S. President because of his actions inciting the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol, Colorado's highest court has found in an unprecedented ruling that's headed to for the Supreme Court. Colorado's Supreme Court issued the ruling yesterday, Tuesday, 
day, barring Trump from the state's primary ballot, but st stay the decision to allow the former president to appeal, which his campaign said he plans to do. He has until January 4th under the state court's ruling. The ruling was the first to say Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election results render him ineligible to run under a post-Civil War era provision of the U.S. Constitution that bans insurrectionists from holding public office. This is their quote. President Trump's direct and express efforts over several months exhorting a, his supporters to march to the Capitol to prevent what he falsely characterized as an alleged fraud on the people of this country were indisputably overt and voluntary. And this was a 4-3 ruling from the court. So uh, I just want to make it clear in terms of the Colorado Supreme Court, this was not unanimous. In fact, it won by one vote. Four of them agreed with this. Three of them didn't. Obviously, a seven-person court. All seven justices were appointed by Democratic governors. So even though they were all appointed by Democratic governors, it was still barely passed. Like, this isn't a thing where they were like, oh, yeah, no, we all fully agree with it. No, no, no. Even the fact that they're all Democratic governors, it passed by a singular vote. Moreover, the evidence uh, amply showed that President Trump undertook all these actions to aid and further a common unlawful purpose that he himself conceived and set in motion, prevent Congress from certifying the 2020 presidential election and stop the peaceful transfer of power. In addition to his appeal, Trump plans to seek a stay preventing the ruling from taking effect. The pause could extend past January 4th, depending on what the Supreme Court decides whether to hear the case. The court directed Colorado Secretary of State to keep Trump's name on the president presidential primary ballot until the matter is decided by the U.S. Supreme Court. Democratic Party leaders are in a state of paranoia over the growing dominant lead President Trump has amassed in the polls. They have lost faith in the failed Biden presidency and are now doing anything they can to stop American voters from throwing them out of office next November. So obviously, this is big news. Dare I say it, actually, Historic news. In fact, I wasn't really going to cover it. I know you guys come here like we come here for some laughs, for some degeneracy. Once in a while, we'll cover the major news going on, especially if it has an impact on the economy. And I was talking with my team about this of like, should we cover this news? And even though it's not directly tied to the economy, I want to cover it just because it really actually feels like this is a historic thing potentially setting a historic precedent of what could happen to all presidential hopefuls for years to come. So is there a direct connection to our degenerate trading? No, not really, but also just being personally a person in the US trying to track what is going on in this crazy, crazy time, it feels like we should cover some of these, I guess, big, big news uh, happenings, developments. So after this, we kind of saw a brilliant chess move from one presidential hopeful, Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, he is a GOP presidential candidate, and he is polling, I believe, right now in the third position. I guess I'd have to check the recent polls. Obviously, Trump is clear ahead. And then below him, it's always DeSantis, Haley, and Ramaswamy kind of fighting it out. Well, anyway, a lot of people for quite a while have known that Vivek is not running to be president. He's basically running to be president, but he's really pleading his case to be the VP or set up a better foundation for a, a future within politics. So he's doing everything in his power at all times to be very, very supportive of Trump. Once again, it seems as if he wants to be VP. So as soon as this was decided and announced by the Colorado Supreme Court, Vivek, smart chess move, came up and said, hey, I'm going to pull out then. And I think every other person should pull out. So even though the other candidates are probably trying to win this, he's put himself in a situation where it's, he's actually kind of, it was smart. It was a very, very smart chess move. He's more than willing to pull out because he doesn't want to win anyway. He's once again doing anything he can to bolster himself in the views of Trump, ideally to most likely become VP. And obviously this then causes a little bit of, I guess, turmoil within the conservative party because Obviously, if other people don't pull out, it's like, well, oh, hang on, Trump's way ahead. Are you going to do something that's like not supportive of Trump? So it, it's a brilliant psychological move, I would say. Uh, but anyway, here's what he had to say. They have just tried to bar President Trump from the Colorado ballot using an unconstitutional maneuver that is a bastardization of the 14th Amendment to our U.S. Constitution. This was a provision, Section 3, that was designed to bar Confederate members, people who switched to the Confederacy, from actually being able to serve. That's very different than what's at issue here, to say the least. This is a hollowed out husk of what the country was built on. The basic principle that we, the people, select our leadership, not the 
unelected elite class in the back of palace halls. That's old world Europe, not the United States. That's why I'm making a pledge today that I will withdraw. I pledge to withdraw from the Colorado GOP primary ballot unless and until tr Trump's name is restored. And I demand that Ron DeSantis and Chris Christie and Nikki Haley do the same thing or else these Republicans are simply complicit in this unconstitutional right, attack they're putting a lot of on pressure the way on we them. conduct our constitutional republic. Smart chess I refuse move. to be complicit in that. I think what they're doing is wrong. And I think it's up to Republicans to step up and stand up with a spine for our country's future. That's really what's at stake. Whether we the people See, actually have a say right now? Seems in really deciding shaky. who leads this country. Yes, it would be easier for other Republicans like me who are running in this race to say, hey, if Trump is sidelined, there's our opportunity. No doubt other candidates are probably privately celebrating with their corporate sponsors. That's not the right thing to do. I think the most useful thing that every GOP candidate can do right now is to join me in that pledge. I'll say that I will withdraw from that Colorado GOP primary ballot until Trump's name is restored. This belongs to the people, not to the unelected Democratic cabal of judges in Colorado. Whoop, lost him a little bit there. Lost him a little. Or any other All state. Right. And I demand that Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley and Chris Christie do the same thing, or else they're complicit in what the security state is trying to do to shut down Trump. I stand by that and I expect them to do the right thing. Once again, do I really buy this as like, oh, it's such great moral character of Vivek? No, it's a smart chess move to strengthen his argument to be VP. That's what I think is going on. You might have a different opinion of it. That's simply my opinion. Anyway, that's all the drama going on. Let's get into the drama of the stock market. Today, Wednesday, December 20th at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. ET, a half hour into the trading day, we get the consumer confidence number. The line in the sand is 103.8. And we also simultaneously get existing home sales for the month of November. The line in the sand, the expectation is 3.78 million. And then a half hour after that, 10.30 a.m., we're going to get crude oil inventories. The hedge fund traders dominating a massive bet on bonds. A small bunch of hedge fund traders dominate the massive basis trade. They've made billions for the firms and alarm financial supervisors. So you can read this. It's actually really, really interesting. But there's a couple of people who are dominating a slight difference between treasuries and treasury futures. And they're always playing that arbitrage and they're leveraging it to the tune of billions of dollars. Obviously, the people making billions of dollars off of it say, yeah, of course, why wouldn't we? But now the SEC is saying, uh, yeah, that's dangerous because if it blows up, you could really negatively impact treasuries. And that's what, I don't know, they're kind of fighting about this right now. Super, super leveraged trade, uh, kind of arbitrage within the world of fixed income. So just want to bring that up to you. If you are looking to read an interesting article, check it out on Bloomberg. Uh, bringing it back to individual companies, FedEx shares tumble after weaker demand hit revenue outlook. If you look at the adjusted EPS, 399 versus 418 expected, and the uh, revenue, 22.17 billion versus 22.41 billion expected. So missing on the top and bottom line, obviously not so good in terms of earnings. Uh, I alluded to it earlier this week of, I don't really trade FedEx, but I pay attention to it because FedEx is commonly thought to be a barometer for the health of the overall market of, are people sending stuff? It's just like a, a business I, I suppose, for lack of a better word, activity barometer. And obviously, if FedEx is busy, that kind of means a lot of businesses are busy. And if it's not busy, not so good for the state of things. So it's not the best barometer out there, but I think it's still pretty solid barometer for the state of the overall market. So the fact that FedEx got hit, okay, how much more steam does this rally have in it? Something to consider. On top of that, uh, this morning we heard from General Mills. I haven't seen the numbers yet. I'll find them after the market closes. Micron, BlackBerry, and Miller and & Knoll. And then Thursday uh, we have Carnival and Nike are probably the two that you guys might be in interested in. So I just wanted to share those with you. If any of you uh, know the General Mills number, I just haven't seen them yet. Let me know. Someone just said it is a shit show. Uh, so that doesn't sound so good. That doesn't sound so good whatsoever. Uh, definitely something to consider. Now, not technically earnings, but still important. Apple to halt U.S. sales of smartwatches after a patent loss. Company to stop offering Watch Series 9 and Ultra 2 in the U.S. Move comes in response to ruling on Mazimo patents from ITC. 
And there is so much to chew on when it comes to Apple today, Ed. So let's stick with the company that's also confirming it's soon going to be halting sales of its flagship Apple Watch models right here in the United States. Now, the move comes following an ITC ruling as part of a long-running patent dispute between Apple and the medical technology company Massimo around the Apple Watch's blood oxygen sensor technology. Let's Blood get our take from our Bloomberg Intelligence, Anna Agrana. And first, the watches. This is quite a major step, but basically they're anticipating an import ban here. Yeah, I mean, we were expecting, uh, you know, my colleague Tamlin's done a lot of work on this, that uh, there would be a settlement by now between the two companies. And, uh, you know, we still have a few days. Let's see if this is just Armstronging by both the companies, but, but let's see what happens. But we are, we are hopeful that there'll be a settlement between them. All right, so a little bit of negativity for Apple with the newest watches. Just wanted to share that. And also, let's now dive into the seasonality for today individually. I give this out for free every single weekend. MacCores.locals.com. It's in the description of the video. Check it out. It is 100% free. It's just a weekly newsletter. I break down the previous week, give you an idea of the upcoming week. I give you all the major macroeconomic events. I give you all the earnings and then the ones that I think you'll particularly care about. And then this is, I think, the true utility is the seasonality. Now, Today, historically, over the past 25 years, has it's leaning bearish. It's not exactly bearish. The bulls have won it 48% of the time, so the bears have won it 52% of the time. The profit factor is below one, i.e. favoring the bears, and that's why I said it's leaning bearish. Here's a look at the equity curve of buying it open and selling it closed on the S&P 500 futures market for this individual day over the past 25 years. A little bit negative, a little bit chop, a little bit positive, a little bit negative. So it's a bit of a mess, but I would say slightly favoring the bears. Um, tomorrow, more so favoring the bulls. And then Friday, very, 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 very much favoring the bulls. That's once again this Friday. And then I also give you a breakdown of all the zero DTE callouts that I put in the Discord and on locals. Uh, obviously, if you want these per day, that's more of the premium thing. You could become a premium supporter on locals by switching from member to supporter, but you could do it for free if you use the code Goonie. G-O-O-N-I-E will become, you'll, it'll allow you to become a premium supporter for free. It also gives you access to the Discord if you wanna trade with me and some other pretty awesome people. And then I just do some charting breakdown of the levels I'm watching. The one thing that I wanna to bring to your attention that I'm just really happy about this call out is Bitcoin. If you read this all, I was basically saying, hey, it's looking good. And I think it could get going and check out what's going on right now. Bitcoin, it kind of was breaking out yesterday. I thought it would get going, but now we're just pushing almost at 44,000, kind of bouncing off of 40,500 breakout. Let's see if it can hold here, but uh, just in the short term, and I'm not really an active trader in Bitcoin. Most of it, I'm just like holding, holding, holding. But for the people who are short term, I just want to bring to your attention that we actively have a breakout going on right now. All right, five things to know before that stock market bell goes dingity ding 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 today, Wednesday. Holly jolly markets. Things are looking good. Missing the mark. Target blame theft and violence for nine store closures. It's all clicking e commerce online as primary holiday shopping destination. Of course, everyone's going to be doing online. Uh, affirmation, hang on, this is from the Waltons, uh, expanded its partnership with Buy Now, Pay Later, a firm probably very much benefiting on it. And then FedEx flags, we talked about how it kind of really, really missed on its numbers. Now, after the market gets going, I do want to give you uh, two interesting crypto updates. The first thing is about how a new analyst is coming out with $160,000 price target for Bitcoin in 2024. And then I also want to cover this crazy story about how a trader turned $450 into 2 million betting on a new meme coin. Coin. So that's a little something that you can look forward to after the market opens and maybe settles down a bit. But with that being said, the market is about to go dingity ding ding ding. Bitcoin looking really good. So I'm going to put I'm going to leave it right here just because Bitcoin is skyrocketing. And then I figured we might as well watch coin. If there's something that you really want, like if something's moving big in the like as market opens, if you want it up, obviously feel free to shout it out. Um, you guys are voting. And before this happens, let me try. Let's spin the old wheel. Green Day. Like the band. The Wheel of Destiny. The Wad. Is guaranteeing us. Absolutely guaranteeing us a Green Day. Um, so the wheel, obviously, it's not a prediction mechanism. It goes into the future. It finds out how the market played out. And then it comes back into the past relative to where it was and tells us the answer. So the 63% of you 
who voted bullish on the day, uh, the wheel does concur. The wheel very, very, very much concurs. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, if you have a bearish position, I'm sorry. Like, don't shoot the messenger type of a deal. It's not me. I'm just letting you know what the wheel of destiny is actually telling us. So with that being said, oops. I dropped my pen. I need, I need my pen, my pen of destiny. I need it. I got it just in case you guys call out things that you want me to like look at so I don't forget them. But, oh, folks, once again, the heart rate's coming back. I should have on my Apple Watch to track my own health during these, this 20-day trading challenge. 18 days left. We did well on day 20. We did well on day 19. I need 56 units in total, and I'm already done with 15. So two trading days done, 15 units done. 41 more units to go. 18 trading days to go. That is what is still on the plate for me to win this trading challenge. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Dingity, ding, ding, ding. The casino is open. Best of luck to all. Play responsibly. If not, have buttloads of fun. All right. Really, a little bit rocky in the spy, a little bit rocky in the queues, but we know what's not rocky is Bitcoin. Dude. This is moving right now. Bitty bitty Bitcoin from 745 until now has gone from sub 43K to over 44K. So uh, gaining like 1.2 thousand in, I don't know, a couple hours. That's crazy. That's crazy. And similar situation in other cryptos as well. Solana cruising. You have ETH cruising. Just crypto is popping right now. Crypto is popping buttloads multiple buttloads i'm late i know i know did you ever go over aa diluting the stock again no i don't really feel like covering it because i don't think it's surprising to any of you and i don't think any of you are actively trading amc anymore because why would you like the, unless you're like shorting it and if you are shorting it congrats but adam aaron's still a scumbag and the people who still support him are actually like clinically stupid so i i there's no need for me to like cover it he's diluting it again that's not news it's just it's exactly what people like myself have been calling out time and time again and as much as i can explain it to some of the people within that community the cult sycophantic community i can't help them understand it i can explain it but i can't make them understand it and uh, you would think that their p l just blowing up in their accounts would eventually make them understand it but apparently it's not uh, apparently it does not make them understand it. All right, let me do, 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 do. Let me just double check some of this stuff. I just want to make sure I am set up uh, appropriately. So market decent open this morning. Interesting. So the 10 minute is red. The 30 minute is actually red, but now the five minute is trying to rally back a little bit. Um, I know you guys voted green. I know the wheel told us green. But the current movement is not necessarily like it's pushing right at open, but I don't know. Those the EMA cloud freaking me out a little bit. Maybe it's different on the da, 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 the cues. Let's like compare the spy to the cues. Dude, the cues nailed right there. Jeez. Same situation. So the five minute trying to fight back the 10 minute trying to get above and close above but the 30 minutes still in this danger zone still very 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 much in this danger zone all right things to consider bitcoin looking good all right let me make sure that i am good to go over here i need to get my potential trade set up Oh man, here come the nerves. Here come the nerves. What are we at? It is 9.33. All right, Matt. Whew. Whew. Just got to keep the trains on the tracks. Just got to keep the train on the tracks. Just be disciplined. Stick to the trades. Don't do anything stupid. As long as I'm not stupid, this should be okay. It's everything should be okie dokie artichokies. 
as long as I stick to the plan. I have a plan. I research the plan. I just need to find the monk like discipline to stick to said plan. That's all I need to do. That's all I need to do. What do we have here? All right, what are we doing? I just need to. All right, let's switch this over. Full with camera. Here's all the accounts. You can see the lowest one is 51.5K. The highest one is 51.8K. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. What are we doing? Oops. Order oh. canceled. There we go. Order filled. That was awkwardly delayed. Quickest way to lock in 150. I just went long there on this breakout. I had a couple signals going on my other screen, uh, but it happened. It got in and out so quickly that not only did it take a bit for this to upload and update, but the audio was way behind. So uh, looks like max 165 was locked in and as minimal as 85 was locked in. Little bit of slippage. Basically, I traded on one account, but I use this thing called Trade Copier to uh, propagate it across all of the accounts. So uh, 85, that's unfortunate. 165 is lucky. Um, so, okay, first trades in. We got another unit down. Now we're down to just 40 units. We started off at 56. When we got to today, I had 41 left to do. Now we got another unit locked in. So down to 40. 40 units, 18 trading days. And I need to do about one to two more trades today to stick on the exact plan that I have, the exact strategy that I have. All right, we're doing it. We're locking it in. We're staying realistic. All right, let me actually get to the... I just like this one minute um, a little bit better. There we go. Um, uh, trade copier, is it offered by Apex? I actually don't know if it's Apex. I mean, if you just look it up, you'll find if you search Ninja trade copier, it'll pop up for you. Uh, I think Tradeovate has their own built-in one that I've heard is even better. Obviously, on mine, I'm showing you that there is a bit of slippage. So, like, if that obviously matters to you, like, that's something to consider. I myself think maybe it's a little bit better to actually code up your own Ninja Script strategies and run the strategies independently on each account rather than using Trade Copier. That's probably a way to help with slippage. Um, so, just throwing out some concepts. Did you get? Did you get any super chats today? Say, oh, bitch, um, tay. Oh, bitch, um, tay. It means means I love you, Peppa. Oh, bitch, um, tay. Um, tay. Oh, say, oh, bitch, um, tay. Oh, bitch, um, tay. Means I love you, Peppa. Yeah, that's the one I got. Do I know what it means? No, but it's fun. It's provocative. It gets the people going. Um, so I'm a fan of it. Um, I'm a fan of it. All right. So one trade locked in cruising thus far have not blown up 40, basically 40 more trades to go. And we'll see how this plays out. The question is, can I trade 40 times without being wrong? The odds for that are not high folks, it's not high whatsoever. Um, in fact, if most trades had a 50, 50 chance, that would be one divided by two to the power of 40 which is a very, very low number. Uh, I believe that my strategy has considerably higher than 50% accuracy, but even like with 99% accuracy, it, it's a tough thing to trade that many times and not mess it up. Um, a very, very tough thing. Now, uh, before I get my next trade in, obviously, shout out to today's stream sponsor, bringing you the opening bell, Streetbeat. If you're interested in robotic, algorithmic, systematic trading, Streepy, in my humble opinion, is the best place to get started because they use AI, specifically ChatGPT, to allow you to create your own trading strategies. This is a robo-advisor. Yes, you can buy and sell stock the way you normally would. 
but that's not what I like about it. I like the robotic systematic algorithmic trading. I have my own strategies there. They have some pre-built ones that you could choose to use if you want. So check it out. It is pinned to the top of chat. It's in the description of the video. And because it's the holiday season, they now have a better offering for you to get you guys to check it out. So if you use the code Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, you're going to be getting a bonus from anywhere between 10 all the way to $5,000. And from there, they also have a new refer a friend program where you can make even more money if you share it with your buddies. So check it out, download it. It's free to download Apple app store, Google play store. They now have a website, a web app with it. Use the code Matt M A T T the very first page when you're getting it. Um, if you want, they do have more business dealings now with other brokerages. So if you want to keep your money on one brokerage, but use the street B trading strategies, either that you like from them or the ones that you've personally created, you can do that depending on if you're on the right brokerage that has a business relationship with them. So anyway, pin to the top of chat in the description of the video, check out Streetbeat if you want to get into the world of systematic algorithmic trading. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Especially the presidential or not presidential. I guess I should say Congress. There's one strategy that they have pre-built called U.S. Congress buys and that buys and sells for you whatever Congress is buying and selling in aggregate. That's my favorite one. Uh, I built some of my own. I think one's called Honey Badger. Another one's called Va Va Value Gem. Um, thus far, they're literally all in the green. So I've been having a great experience and you should check it out. Uh, so use the code Matt, M-A-T-T. -T, and obviously shout out to Streetbeat for being a longstanding partner with the channel. Bitcoin continuing to go and go and go. The queues continuing to go and go and go. Dude, if I just bought at minute two of the day, like the second minute open and just held till now, I would honestly probably be done with like the entire challenge. I probably would have made all the money that I need. Streetbeat made me money this year while my zero DTE lost me money. I'll slap the like for that. Brian, if you want to talk about zero DTEs, join the Discord because in the month of December, there's only been one like call out that didn't hit. So within the Discord on the weekends, we do teaching sessions. So talking about options and more specifically credit spreads, debit spreads, um, iron condors, straddles, iron butterflies, reverse iron butterflies. But anyway, we do some more advanced teaching or teaching on advanced option strategies. And one of them is a zero DT call out that involves selling credit spreads. And thus far in the month of December, it's only been wrong one time. Um, so if that's something that interests you or anyone else who just wants to know about options and options trading and all that good stuff, uh, I implore you to check it out. I implore you to check it out and you can get them for free. No cost to you. Use the code Goonie on locals, macros at locals.com. And uh, that will in there, you become a supporter. You start off as a member. You can transfer it to being a supporter by using the code Goonie once again, free. One miss too many. That's fair. That's a fair critique. That is a fair critique. All right. Market is going this morning. Uh, I am gearing up for my second trade. But first, let's see what is going on here. This is Spot Gamma. I think in the description, there's like a two-week trial, free trial for you or something if, that, if you care about. Uh-oh. Okay, here we go. Uh, options, strong from the start. So as price is going up, uh, price is the white line, the teal line is the zero DT, and the purple line is all expiration. So options are getting a bit more bullish. More specifically, lots of call buying. Lots of call buying today, thus far. Obviously, we'll see how things shake out, but thus far, aggressive call buying. Consumer confidence at 10 a.m., yes, uh, and also existing home sales. So two reports at 10 a.m. today, simultaneously existing home sales, consumer confidence. And then also at 1030, we get the crude oil update, uh, which I mean, it's kind of, I guess I would argue important this time around, just because if you look at crude, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six green days in a row, looking forward to test 77, get above and close above this 48 EMA uh, to see if there's potentially a change of trend signal. Oh, brother. 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 Oh, how are we doing this? All right. Uh, the queues are coming up to 
technically not their all-time high. Well, it kind of depends if you're using pre or post market trading. I really don't when I consider highs. So this is intraday trading hours from 9.30 to 4. The all-time high is 409.28, but technically in post market, it did go higher yesterday after the market closed and a little bit apparently this morning. Um, so NASDAQ did hit an all-time high yesterday and it looks like maybe, maybe it's coming up to test it once again. Bitcoin looking good. The energy sector is looking good. The financial sector is looking good. The utility sector, a little bit weak. The industrial sector, just kind of going sideways. Healthcare, healthcare, healthcare is, was hit, but now getting picked up a little bit. Interessante. Interessante. Uh, the, my cues are not updating at all right now, or maybe they're just not being traded. Okay. 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 Time for, is this updating? Yes, it is. Okay. I need to get another trade in. I'm trying to get a, this trade in before. Before, before, before the consumer confidence report. Hmm. Order submitted. All right. This isn't actually my order. I'm just putting there so I could drag the line quickly. Uh, so going for my second trade. I guess I should double check to see if this is properly. Okay, all the accounts are still on. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Let's see how this goes. Let's see how it goes. I might quickly, I suppose, fill the order. All right. Calm, cool, collected. Calm, cool, collected. Calm, cool, collected. All right, patience, everyone. Just patience. Let's not freak out right now. We're going to stay calm. We're going to stay cool. We're going to stay collected. We're going to be the market gonna be the market let's not do anything rash let's not freak out there's no need to freak out calm cool collected No reason to freak out. All right. Hmm. Come on, I'm waiting for this minute bar to close. Everyone steady. All quiet on the Western Front. No reason to freak out. No reason to freak out here. What are we doing? All right. Order submitted. Shit. I thought we were going to pop. All right. Calm. Cool, collected. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Breathe. 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 Uh oh, fuck. Oh, 
Oh, shit. No, let's go the other way. Come on, bulls. Come on, bulls. Come on. I really thought that was going to pop quick there. I thought it was being fast, but I wasn't. But maybe I'll get lucky anyway. Maybe I'll get lucky anyway. Come on. Push it. I literally top ticked it. Fuck me. <sighs> Shit. Losing a bit of that momentum. It's stalling out. I don't know if I like this. I don't know if I like this at all. It's stalled. And the issue is, it's one thing if it stalls, but with the report coming out, it might like blow me out of my position. Fuck. Come on. Come on. There we go. Come on. Push it. My reason was if I could get in and out before the potential double top, I should be okay. Uh, just to like avert a double top scenario. So that's why I was like, okay, if I enter here and have my profit right before it, great. I'm not going to be the sucker if there is a double top. But not waiting for that confirmation has put me in a situation where if it's just grinding sideways, if it doesn't hit in the next 10 minutes, I have to like, I guess what, take the risk of the confidence report. Might get lucky, might not get lucky. Come on, just push before. Let me out of this trade beforehand. Just so I can stick to my trade, stick to my schedule, stick to the system. Come on, come on, just push. Hmm. Here we go, here we go. Calm, cool, collected. We're playing the trend. There we go. Order canceled. There we go. Locked, locked. You can see 350 on most accounts, 365 on the highest, 285 on the lowest. Locked, locked. This is what I, this is why I, did that trade early because I was worried about the double top. This is exactly what I did early. I was like, oh, if it pushes and gets smacked there, you could get screwed. Uh, Wall Street, not quite yet. I'm not where I need to be. Um, not exactly where I need to be on the day. Now at this point, uh, not quite at this point. Hang on, I'm reading some of these. On, I have um I'm running some signals over here to give me an idea what are the internals looking like market internals are neutral leaning bearish but trying to fight back bullish now because of like the negativity in the pre-market all right there is that 10 a.m report All right, what are we doing? 10 a.m. report. So that's, I'm being very cognizant of that because we have seven and a half minutes till that report comes out. Seven and a half minutes till that report comes out. All right, what are we doing? What are, uh, I see a lot of questions right now of like, what is this? What am I trading on? What the hell is the future? I'll explain it all in a second. I'm not trying to be rude or anything. I just need to be laser focused on not blowing anything up. The trading competition I'm in requires perfect trading over 20 days, 56 units, and the units are sized accordingly to what I'm trying to pull off every day. And right now I am now at like 37 left to go. So this is day three of 20 and I need 56 units and uh, I have 37 left to go. So I almost have 20 units locked in of the 56. I will answer all of your questions as soon as I 
get locked in when I need to get locked in. Oh man. Oh man. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? How much till this minute is over? The minute's almost over. Order submitted. There we go. Order canceled. There we go. There we go. Uh, so three trades in out. Highest appears to be 450. Lowest appears to be 385 on all 20 of these accounts. So the average is probably 400 bucks, 400 times 20. That's about 8K locked in uh, just before the consumer confidence report drops, which awesome, 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 awesome. That's exactly where I want to be. We are on schedule. Uh, 8K locked in, 8K locked in, 8K locked in. That's a good day. That's a good Wednesday. That is a good Wednesday. So as we're waiting for this report to come out, I'll explain exactly what is and what isn't happening. I'm in a trading competition on a prop account. The prop firm is called Apex. Uh, actually, here, I'll just give it to you guys. Uh, Apex right here. Uh, it, hang on, this is like stalling out for me. I'm trying to put it in chat to explain what's happening. So, oops, nope, let me put a different one in. I accidentally copied it twice. Dude, this my stuff is going replace pin. Okay, I just pinned it to the top of chat on YouTube and I'm just dropping it in Rumble right now. Um, so if you click on that link, this is exactly what it's gonna look like. Uh, but this is Apex, a prop account. Basically, the way prop accounts work is you pay a certain fee. Right now, it's 71% off, 167 so that's about $48. So I paid $48 per account to get $50,000 worth of, uh, I guess, like leverage. Like, I got a $50,000 account, and I just paid this monthly fee, 71% off of 167 So I paid $48 for a $50,000 account, and I did that 20 times. So I, if you look at this, I have 20 $50,000 accounts and I'm just, I tie them all together. So when I do a trade on one, it does pretty much the similar trade across the board, not exactly the same because of slippage. Um, and what I'm doing right now is I'm in a competition that's being hosted by Apex uh, to basically do max account withdrawals from them in the month of January. And if you do it and right here, if you have a 50K account, the max you can withdraw at one time, uh, like this is getting into the nitty gritty of it. But if you do all the math, I'll be able to withdraw $80,000 in the month of January if I trade well enough. But once again, it, it's not like I'm not taking on the exposure. The exposure I'm taking on is just the monthly fee. Like it's not like it's 50K of my money. 50K times 20 counts is a million dollars. Folks, I don't have a million dollars. So I got the financial exposure through Apex, the prop firm, and I just paid this fee. So in my mind, this is a nice in between between paper trading where there's nothing at risk and funding your own full account where it's all of your money, your own risk. This is that nice in between where there's a little bit at risk, like basically $48 per account. You don't want to blow it up. And then if you trade well enough, you could take money out. So like to me, in terms of risk reward, there's lower risk with still higher reward. Now, obviously to get funded, actually you have to first pass their test of $3,000 in profit without suffering a 2.5K drawdown. Um, it's not the easiest pass test to pass, if I'm being completely honest with you. It took me multiple tries. And then once you kind of get the groove of it, that's how I was able to pass the test on 20 different accounts. Right now they're running a specialty deal where generally you have to trade for seven days to get approved. Now you only have to trade one day. So if you hit $3,000 in profit on your very first day, you can get approved for a quote unquote real account uh, the very next day. And if you start doing well on that account, you can actually like request payouts from the system. And then three months after that, it goes to like fully like live legitimate accounts. So if you want to do this full on degeneracy that I'm doing right here, where I just made 8K across 20 accounts in three trades, check it out. I mean, the risk is minimal to you if it doesn't work out. Like you're not risking 50K of your own money. Like I said, in my mind, I very much picture this to be the in-between of paper trading, no risk, no reward, and then your own full account, high risk, high reward. This is in between where the reward is pretty high, 
but the risk is far, far much smaller. Um, so just want to share that with everyone. Looks like the 10 a.m. report is about to come out. So maybe we should bring that up and pay attention to it. Once again, this is called Apex. Uh, and the if you use this code, TPMGLUS, that's how you get 71% off. Uh, anyway, let's go over to CNBC. FedEx getting slaughtered after its dismal earnings. All right. All right. Waiting for them to come back. Uh, we'll cover that. We have some Bitcoin stuff to cover. Uh, right now, the 30 minute trying to reverse trend on the NASDAQ, the 10 minute trying to reverse trend on the NASDAQ, the five minute very much trying to reverse trend on the NASDAQ. Same thing with the SPY 30 and 10 pushing above the 48, trying to switch the red cloud back over to green. And then the five minute, the cloud is already green. So right now, even though things were looking a little suspect this morning, things are recovering pretty nicely. Now, obviously with that being said, we are about to get this report. Let's go to the three minute. Let's go to the three minute. This should be coming out in 10 seconds. 10 seconds, we should be getting the consumer confidence and the existing home sales. Is it the most impactful report ever? No, but it's, it's still somewhat important. Uh, and let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. All right, not the biggest sway. Like we saw a little bit of craziness. We saw a little bit of craziness. Order submitted. Order canceled. Oh, fuck. Or, or, tar order filled. Order canceled. What the fuck just happened? Good Wednesday morning. Welcome to another hour of Squawk on the Street. Okay. I'm Carl Keaton, uh, David Faber, Leslie Faber here at Bush Now we have a large Stock discrepancy. 450 to, like, that was After weird slippage to play that. Up is the Dow finally going to take a break today. We got uh, losses in the 40... Six They're all range, still properly accounted for. Um, well, some relief around the globe today. Bit of a bummer. And we are 30 minutes into the trading session here. Three big movers of a we are watching today. FedEx, one of the big stocks to watch. Shares tumbling on its profit miss and weak outlook. We'll have much more Huge on spread now. Goes from 455 here, on the lowest account. 10.6%. General to Mills 725 also in the red on the biggest revenue account. for its fiscal second quarter came in light of expectations. Organic net set, uh, set sales down 2% year over year despite stronger pricing. And watch Salesforce, Wells Fargo downgrading that name to equal weight from overweight as it evaluates which stocks will benefit from what it expects will be a steady uh, shift toward growth 20, 19, in 2024. 18, Conference board 20, and existing on the 19, tape. Let's get to Rick Santelli. Morning, 19. Rick. Good morning, Carl. Yes, Rick. from the conference 19, board for 18, the month of December. 17, Headline number expected to be up 17, 104 to 105 ish. Blew that away. 110.7. 110.7. That looks to be the best level since July of this year. And if we look at the present situation at 148.5, also a nice pop. So eight since accounts. July. And finally, what expectations we have, what may lie ahead, 85.6. Really significant jump over 77.4. Guess what? Best since July. Now let's move towards November existing home sales. And do remember, rates have come down a lot. But in November, if you looked at bank rate average 30-year fix, it never traded below 760 until the very last day of November when it was at 757. So it didn't get the big bulk of the drop that we're experiencing in December. Having said that, a nice pop reversing five months of decline on existing home sales for an annualized rate of 3.82 million seasonally adjusted annualized units. And what's interesting about this breaks the five month streak and in the 20, rear view mirror, 3.79 million seasonally three, annualized four, five, units six, was seven, the eight, worst eight, in 13 years eight. in terms of a pace. And its comp 13 years ago was 3.45 million, which happens to be the lowest since record keeping. 20. And a couple other things to pay attention this to. This is too if big of a discrepancy. If you looked at the median home price, it was up 4%. If you looked at it year over year, well, it's the highest November ever at $387,600. And one other issue we'd like to point out on a year over year That's basis. That's a big discrepancy. Down I guess it's just a function of volatility. Carl? 
450 Appreciate all the way that, up to Rick. 710. Rick Meantime, the Dow and the NASDAQ 100 coming off some fresh record highs. s and its highest level since January of last year and trading close to all-time highs. How much more room does the rally have to run? Joining us here at Post 9 this morning is Trivariates Adam Parker. Dr. P, it's good to have you back. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to see you guys. I'd be curious to know how you were characterizing this, this recent run we've had uh, that centered around a, ped, a Fed pivot, so to speak. I think the distribution of outcomes is still skewed Order to the positive submitted. for the next 12 months. Um, if the average stock gross canceled. margins go up, and okay. You're get so the ones that were in the 400, I got over to 500 now. Probably Europe, maybe Japan. History dictates that's a pretty good combo. I mean, if I've learned anything in the last 30 years, it's fighting the Fed is not an intelligent idea. I don't know what the second thing I've learned after the first one is, but I could try to find one. One, so if you're going to get some accommodation, whether it's you know eight. three times, not six, whether it's a second down after, I mean, there's some, some So 21 and on, above on the are good. These, these are all individual accounts. 21 to 26 <laughs> and, uh, are good. One, two, three, four, argue, five, six. So these six accounts. So that means I have 14 accounts that are kind of uh, out of sync. Maybe they sync. can have some productive employee bases. And I don't know, maybe, maybe that's the bull case that has a higher probability than what's in the price for, for some companies. And yet there's this narrative out there that the market could be overbought. Do you think it's discounting enough of the risks at these levels? I think overbought is a One, two, technical three, term that four, has a shorter five, six, horizon seven, than I meant. I think nine, for sure ten, there's stocks 11, that are overbought. 12, and the number one conversation 13, I have with clients in the last two weeks has been, will we get some kind of nasty rotation underneath starting in January? I think last year's lesson was, um, you know, you had to cover your massive 20, meta Tesla and NVIDIA shorts in late December of 2022 and get massively long on January 3rd. 20, and, and that was down your, your God 20, if you did that, right? So all the way I think down people are saying, look, there's okay. a lot of growth cyclicals, whether they're housing related, uh, as Rick just talked about, or whether they're uh, electrification industrials or like order, select NASDAQ names. Order just canceled. Like so I think all right. people are suspecting. Bada bing, bada boom. Overbought. I think I, I fixed it all. And find the minimum. That has better risk reward. And, and, and so I think. There could be a, a lot moving on. I think I January got them all above quickly. 600. Maybe it's payments, which are left for dead. Here's Maybe a little snapshot services, of everything I'm doing. I think a, a 655 appears to be the, the smallest. Metals and and energy okay, so I brought in that differential because I'm trying to bring like, all this. this is so fucking I think annoying. underneath people are betting on my a, a Dude, my mind is going a million miles per hour. They need to shut up. My apologies. Um, sorry, I should have been explaining what I was doing. So the accounts got too far different. I'm trying to bring all 20 accounts pretty much in lockstep to my goal and 700 down to 450. That's a three unit differential. It's one thing to deal with a three unit d differential, like when I'm 15 of the 20 days done, but to be three days in and to already have that disparity, it just makes it more difficult to like manage it. So now that they're within a unit of each other, it's more it's more manageable um, of like basically what I'm attempting to do and what I'm attempting to pull off. So obviously you can see all the accounts right now. The biggest differential, 5221 is the smallest. 52 and 525. So right now, in, in total over three days, there is a three unit differential still. Actually, yeah, a three unit differential. So that actually would have been worse. So definitely worthwhile to kind of like, I don't know, I was trading a portion of the accounts just to bring them a little bit closer to where they all need to be. Uh, just join, are all those today's trades? Yeah, this is the total PL on the day. So basically 600 times 20, that's 12K. Uh, 600 times 20, 12K locked in. Um, and seven, where does that bring me? So 52.6 is what's required. I need, in total, the accounts have to be 52,600 to do the first pullout requests, uh, which I have up to January 5th to make that a thing. Uh, so that's the rest of this week, four trading days next week, and then obviously four trading days in the first uh, whatever portion of, um, first trading portion of January, I think it is. I think it is. I think that's where we're at. Uh, but thus far, good. That's a good day. Um, I was kind of hoping they would all be in 700. So like part of my mind wants to look at all the $600 accounts and try to bring them up. Or maybe I shouldn't focus on the p and on the day. Maybe I should focus on all the ones that are particularly at a skew here. Like there's a couple that are clearly lower. Um, 
So maybe I focus on those. Or maybe I don't even worry about the cleanup yet because we're still too early. Maybe I focus up I focus on the cleanup a bit later on. But like it is a three unit differential from the high to the low, which I'm not the biggest fan of. But it feels like maybe I just need to take a breather. I'm not as angry and as tilted as I was yesterday. Not as angry and as tilted as I was yesterday with the whole deal. When I like knew I just needed to stop. Uh, but now, if anything, I think my like major emotion is like a sigh of relief of like, okay, like I, I was actually particularly worried about this consumer confidence report, like blowing up my day. So basically uh, in my mind, I'm just trying to think, do I want to end it here? Do I just want to end it at 12K? Or do I want to go for like another two to 4K on the day? Um, because obviously like I know, I guess like I, I have various thoughts on this, but like a 20 day trading challenge, you do have the option to like equally go for the same amount all 20 days. Okay, that's one way to do it. Or maybe make the start of the challenge more difficult. And then if you can get through that difficult period, the quote unquote second half is a little bit more of like, I guess, smooth sailing type of a situation. Um, so that's part of my mind is like, okay, do I just want like to make the the difficult more like the start more difficult and make the latter half easier? Or do I want it to all be medium difficult throughout the entire thing? Um, double up. Eh, there's like certain rules for this competition that I actually can't go above 1400 per account per day. Um, so uh, the sweet spot is between basically really 1300 as the max and 400 as the bottom per day. That's the sweet spot above 400, but below 1200. Um, if you like do out all the math and all that good stuff. Um, so right now I'm still within that balance. I'm like kind of actually like right in the middle of all that, which I, I like it. I, I'm a fan of that. Um, uh, I kind of want to do one more because once again, the more work I put in now, the less work I have to put in later. I'm a person who would prefer to trade uh, to get my work done in the morning so I can chill at night type of a deal. Futures are a type of contract. You just buy and sell the contract for their nominal value and profit from long, short positions as per usual. Yeah. So uh, based on like, this isn't true, but for the point of this conversation, to get in or out or like to go long or short, it costs you the same thing. It doesn't change with the value of the underlying uh, when you're trading futures. The contracts have a value to either go long or to go short. It's the same value. Um, it doesn't really change. It does change with volatility over the long term, but like, to trade NASDAQ today in the futures market is the same cost to trade it tomorrow, going long or short. And then your profit and or loss is just the differential from when you went long to hopefully it goes higher or when you went short and hopefully it goes lower. And obviously if it goes the other way, you could lose that. So in the NASDAQ, every point it moves, so like from 17,030 to 17,031, that's 20 bucks. Uh, that's per contract and you, I mean, on Apex, you can, on a 50K account, you could trade up to 10 contracts. So you can make every point $200. So it's highly leveraged, highly, highly, highly leveraged. Uh, futures trading by no means is for the faint of heart. I mean, you guys saw this in real time of how quickly you can make and lose money. As quickly as I made all this money, as quickly as I made whatever, 12K, you can very quickly lose that much money. This is a, a high octane type of thing. And obviously I'm playing with extreme leverage right now because that's me. I, I like the fact that my heart feels like it's about to explode outside of my chest. Like, it's just like, you know, it's my it, it's my kink. It's what I'm into. Um, so it's, I cannot with good faith say that futures trading is for everyone. People who are good at futures trading can make a lot of money, can make a lot, a lot of money. Uh, but people who are bad at futures trading, vice versa, you can lose. Like it's live by the door, live by the sword, die by the sword. You're rarely going to find something within the markets where you can make a lot of money, but the downside's not that much. It, usually if you can make a lot, it means you can lose a lot. And that's what's interesting about these prop accounts is in a certain way, your downside is capped because it's, if you don't, if you quote unquote blow up the account, it's not your money. Your downside is not 50K. Your downside is your monthly fee. And then if you want to do it again, you have to buy a whole new account. So your downside is whatever you pay for that monthly fee. It's not actually the account value. Uh, if that 
I guess makes sense. But once again, I'm doing this all through Apex. Apex is the prop account and then Ninja Trader is how I'm doing it. I didn't really know much about prop accounts. I started learning about them in August of this year and I just thought it was a fun challenge. People brought it up to me of like, oh, like, do you think you could pass the challenge? I was like, dude, I haven't even heard of this. Like, it's just, and now that I'm more into it, it's a trading challenge. Like, I'm going to be stoked about it and recommend it to everyone if I do well in the challenge and pass and make all the money, blah, blah, blah. But then if I blow up, of course, I'm going to be angry and be like, this sucks. No one uses it. Like, it's still very much an emotional thing, but like, it doesn't really change like kind of the hardened fact of no matter what you're doing in the market, start with paper trading. Please don't risk real money. Keep your risk as minimal as you possibly can. Hang on. Order submitted. Come on. There we go. Oh. 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 Order canceled. All right, cool. Got some all the way up to 825 and then some as low as 740. I am very happy with that. I am extraordinarily happy with that. You can see most of, some of these accounts are right over the first major mile marker of 52.6. And then we have others that are a couple units away. Looks like there is a three unit deviation. Um, so I can consider that maybe a bit later, uh, maybe just like, I don't know, make that a future map problem. So it looks like a couple accounts, uh, 52, you have to have $2,600 in to do the first uh, withdrawal request to take out the 2K. So I see one, two accounts above that, but then others are about three units behind. Um, so it's basically, I've now locked in 23 units, 23 units out of the 56 that I'm going for, which I'm, I'm feeling good about that. I'm actually feeling that's 33 units to go. Um, so 33 units. And on that, I think this is a good, hey, it worked today. It worked. Dude, what is it gonna work even better right now? Is it going to work even better right now? Order. Order submitted. All right. If this one hits, which I very much hope it does. I was getting a little chasey. I thought the breakout was going to lead to a pop. If this one hits, shutting it down for the day. Um, at a certain point, you have to know if like you're setting up for a good opportunity or if you're pressing your luck. This one hits across the accounts. I'm done on this for the day and day three of the training challenge, ideally nicely locked in. Come on, come on. Oh brother. Oh brother. I was just trying to play this quick little breakout, a quick little scalp breakout. Feels like the enthusiasm I thought the FOMO would carry this. There we go. Order That's the canceled. FOMO I'm talking about. All right. Across the board, 900, oop, 890. I can't, 885. So as high as 970, as low as 885. Good. I'm stoked. Just under 18K. Okay. 18K on the day. I'm stoked with that. I'm not fucking with it. I'm really happy with these numbers. Every account, oop, half the accounts are above that first watermark. I'm stoked. That's a good day for me. Oops, did not mean to do that. Shutting it down, uh, no. All right, locked it in, 18K, locked in. Another day in the books. Uh, day number three, a successful day. 17 more days to go. 17 more days to go, and I can officially put the crown on as a champion trader. Uh, cool, calm, cool, collected. That's all I need, calm, cool, collected and ideally bringing my heart right down. But uh, the SPY getting closer to its all-time high. Oh, actually, you know what I'm really messed up about? Uh, hang on, I do need to put this in. Calm, cool, collected. Two out of five. Uh, putting the signal in the Discord right now. All right, that is in there. Uh, da, da, da. Spy. Da, da, da. 
Where's red? All right. All right. Spy above its high from yesterday. Q's above its high from yesterday. I just put some signals into the Discord and I just want to see where SPX is at. Oh, brother. 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 Dude, the 30 is reverting to 10. <laughs> what can I do to take advantage of the current setup? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Let me look at my account. More importantly, let me look at the options chain. The options chain. The options chain. Things are looking bullish. Mm. Do I just need patience for a better film, maybe? Or is it never going to... All right, we'll see how this plays out if I ever get my fill. Trying to sell a bit of premium here as well. Uh, but once again, the zero DT signal, it is already up in locals. It's up there. It's up there. Resubbed after watching one of your videos mentioning you go down with AMC ship and your frustrations with the comment. And I'm Aaron couldn't agree more. Down 95K. Uh, despise AA to say the least. Yeah, I'm I'm down so much. There's like almost no point in me selling. But that doesn't mean I support Adam Aaron at all. Like I can simultaneously hope that things improve that doesn't mean it's gonna improve but adam aaron's a piece of shit like what i mean it just it is what it is uh uh at one point in time it very much seemed as if he was on our side supporting what is or isn't going on and now we have enough information that like highly 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 suggests that he clearly doesn't give a fuck uh so it, it's unfortunate it's deeply unfortunate, but it is what it is. It is what it is. And uh, did my position get filled? What? One of mine did, but not all, really? Seriously? It's not going to give me my fill? I'm below the midpoint. That's, I feel, a bit of a rarity. A bit of a rarity to not give me my fill there. Uh... Hmm. Why am I not getting a fill? Okay, submit order. Order filled. Well, that one filled. Why am I not getting my fills? All right, I got to fill on one brokerage. I got to fill pretty easily on interactive brokers. Oh, it's because I have it a uh, differential of five cents. That's why. Should I just wait and let this one continue to do what it wants to do? Uh, orders working modify mm. all right i just forced it to give me my fill i just forced it selling a bit of premium feeling not the most bullish on the day just based on the uh signals 
but obviously bullish enough to sell it at a put premium. Uh, if you want to learn how to sell put premium, that's mainly uh, one of the major strategies uh, that's going down in the Discord here. I'm actually loading up my trade right now. Upload, upload. All right, we did that. Did that, did that. So that's where we're at. That is where we at. So the account is shut down. The trading challenge account, day three, locked in. Uh, I don't know what the minimum is, but I think we're most half the accounts are above that first mile marker. And there's a little bit of a Delta, a little bit of a discrepancy, uh, and that's just due to slippage, but Hey, it is what it is. Honestly, uh, the accounts would have all been done if I just bought at open and held to this point. Uh, but is anyone surprised? The wheel told us it would be a green day and look at that. The NASDAQ hit a new all time high Bitcoin sitting above 44 K. What else is moving today? Solana is up a lot. Solana is above 80. Coin is moving. Look at Solana go, dude. That is crazy. What else is moving right now? Oh, say, oh, bitch, um, Tay, Yelena. Oh, bitch, um, Tay. Oh, bitch, um, Tay. What the fuck does that mean, dude? Uh, oh, bitch, um, Tay. I'm probably saying something super inappropriate. And if I am, my apologies. My apologies, my apologies if I am. All right, let's drop this to the five and let's break down some of the other things going on. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the options market just so you guys know who's being aggressive, who's not. Zero DTEs are flattening out right now. And the all expiration is getting still a little bit more bullish. The delta is increasing as price, but you could see like there was a higher velocity and now it's just kind of like petering out. So wait for the movement if we jump to the upside or if we get a bit smacked. Um, so checking that out. Someone said Google a new all time high. Oil's looking good. I'm telling you, look for oil. Can I set up an alert to cross? Uh, add alert. Crossing up. No, how do you add an alert onto this? Add alert. Crossing above. Crossing up. I think this should work. Crossing up above. Does it move with it though? Like per day? Does anyone know? Uh, like as this EMA changes, anyone who's maybe a little bit more familiar with trading view and dynamic alerts. So I just set this alert and obviously it's picking it up on that line, but if the line goes up or down, will that actually change with it? Does anyone know? Like as, as you have EMAs, obviously like they're dynamic, they change throughout the day. Uh, or is it just locked in at that exact magnitude and you have to keep updating it yourself? Um, anyway, I want to know if oil pushes that, uh, does seem like potentially an interesting opportunity. The spy is looking strong, obviously still not that far away from the all time high of 480. The cubes are at a new all time high two days in a row, two new all time highs in a row yesterday when it was pushing its high, it seemed to be struggling a little bit, but obviously fighting back with vengeance now. So we got above and close above the all time high yesterday. And today we are pushing obviously to a brand new all time high gold consolidating. I'm looking for this consolidation. It's on the top side of its EMA cloud. I'm looking for gold to push 2060, get above, and then actually rip to a whole new all-time high. So I'm on the lookout for gold pushing 2062. I'm actually going to set an alert on that myself. Coin, 52-week uh, high, not an all-time high. Obviously, quite a bit of recovery to do. But coin, I don't know, upside gap fill to 176.26. So Definitely looking for coin there. Uh, if it hits that, would I be chasing? Absolutely not. Look at how far away from its EMA it is. If anything, I'd look for a bit of consolidation after that. Tesla, I've been beating the Tesla jump now for a couple of weeks. Ever started consolidating in here. I told you guys endlessly, look for the breakout and the continuation. I called out 260. I called out 270, maybe as high as even 280. It is going, going, going. At this point, 
beautiful entry in the high 230s, low 240s. At this point, your risk could be something closer to 248. So your risk should be higher than your entry point. So it should be a quote unquote free play. Tesla is looking beautiful. Nvidia battling it out at the trend line, battling it out the key technical psychological level of 500. Obviously, if it gets pushing above its all time high of 505, that's an open range breakout. And at that point, you're just white knuckling it. Yeah, you could use things like Fibonacci, Fibonacci extensions and whatnot, but really you could just enjoy the ride. Uh, Netflix, I've been pounding the drum on Netflix of it pushes, it consolidates, looks like it's breaking out. I was talking about getting an entry around 470, now trading at almost 500. Tesla, Netflix, they were in the newsletter. I called them out timelessly or endlessly, like these were just like layups of plays. Uh, Apple, I'm actually surprised Apple's green on the day after the Apple Watch news of having um, like losing the patent case or whatever it is. Man, things are really lagging for me. In fact, Apple came down consolidated, looking to push again. This was its previous all-time high, 198. Its new all-time high is 199.62. Apple still repping some strength. Meta, phenomenal consolidation, explosion. Microsoft still consolidating, okay. Market, I'm telling you guys, if it pushes and holds above 376, look for the return to 384. The push, the consolidation, look for the follow through. We saw it on 10 different stocks that I just showed you. If you're looking for a play where you have reasonable risk to reward, that's what you want. Now, obviously, I would implore you to like actually dive into it a little bit more, know your actual mathematical edge. But if you're like kind of working on that, because it might involve a little bit more higher end math, the, I beg of you to have well-defined risk, well-defined risk, well-defined reward, track it, build up your own little data set in an Excel sheet to be like, hey, I know it works about X percent of a time. Here's the average return. Here's the average loss. Treat it as if you are a systematic robotic algorithmic trader. But I back tested these types of setups where the push, the consolidation in the cloud, and then the follow through. I really, really like it. And the main reason I like it is because it has well-defined risk. Amazon, uh, you kind of missed the train on this one. It's already breaking out. Uh, that actually looks really, really strong. And you said Google is now at an all-time high. Is this an all-time high? No, it's just a 52-week high, not an all-time high. Looking good, though. Uh, Texas Roadhouse hit an all-time high yesterday. And pushed beautifully not a new all-time high today but i got into texas roadhouse down here at 102 103 it pushed i waited for the consolidation and now i'm riding this puppy up same thing with tlt uh as yields drop fixed income aka bonds should perform very very well so i have tlt i got in somewhere around here 88 89 i waited for the cloud to start to flip over uh, and then obviously caught a nice winner. So I'm in TLT. I'm also in TLTW, which is TLT, and they sell covered calls against it. This one is not performing the way I thought it would. I think it has something to do with these dividend dates. Not quite sure, uh, because it seems like with all the dividend dates, it's kind of associated with a drop that maybe I just, I, I don't know. I talked to some fixed income buddies of mine, and I like don't fully understand it. So I might switch my TLTW over to TLT, uh, but I wouldn't be doing that until I see TLT pull back in here. I'm not gonna chase uh, the 20 year bonds. Uh, AMC shooting for a new all time low. Mullen at a new all time low. And apparently he's going for a reverse stock split, one for a hundred, that's ridiculous. So it's gonna be trading, uh, I guess as of tomorrow, it's gonna be trading at like eight bucks instead of eight cents, a oh, one for 100. This is a trash company. This is a scummy trash company that I think is just tantamount to stealing from the retail community. Please don't fall for those fuckwits on uh, Fintwit telling you how great Mullen is. Like, the, the CEO is a fucking scam artist. Like, this is trash. Trash, trash, trash. Mullen is trash, and it's because the CEO is trash. Adam Aaron is trash. Like, there's just, there are scam artists in this world, so please be careful. Please be careful. Mull into the moon. Yeah. If the moon were fucking zero, that's where it would be going to the moon. If the moon were bankruptcy, yes, Mullen would be going to the moon. Uh, MicroStrategy is up 300% year to date. Well, that makes sense. Could go out how much. Uh, oh, the 20 year bond auctions at 1 p.m. Shout out, Seth. Appreciate that. So maybe a little bit of craziness at 1 p.m. Um, thank you. Much appreciated. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else, anything else, anything else, anything else. So 1 p.m. That could most likely it will go well. A lot of the times no one even pays attention to bond auctions because generally they're not messed up. Uh, but they're like um, over the past like two months, there's been a couple ones that like have freaked the market out because uh, they were left with quite a bit of supply when they were selling all of the bonds or the notes or the bills, like whichever one it was, depending on the time. Um, so be careful with that. Maybe pay attention to like the little bit of, if there is craziness at 1 PM, whether to the upside or the downside, it's most likely because of the bond auction. So I appreciate you sharing that Seth. So spies looking good. Qs are looking good. The thing that I'm most impressed about is things were negative on the 10 minute and the 30 minute in EMA. Like look at all these closes below. And then yet we push and like started a rally. So classic bearish fake out. Um, and we saw that on the 30 minute and the 10 minute that's bullish in my book to reverse that way. A failed bearish breakdown has to inherently be bullish. And then if you look at something like the Nasdaq, a similar story, you have the 10 minute that went down, uh, the 30 minute that went down and then across above. And that's actually one strategy that I'm working on right now of the cloud being one color, one direction, i.e. green bullish, red bearish, and then the first bar getting above and closing above the 48, the 50, the 51 EMA, which is the purple line on this chart um, of what the odds of that strategy are. And thus far, it needs a couple filters. It's not perfect out of the box, but there are actually some promising stats surrounding it. So I really like this reversal play. And then obviously, Right, vice versa to that is sometimes you see a nice push, it pushes, comes down, bounces off of the 48 and continues, bounces off the 48 and continues, bounces off the 48 and continues. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically what I'm trying to say is in terms of a trend continuation or trend reversal, the 58 <coughs> EMA has some like intriguing statistics surrounding it. So for those of you who are like, oh, well, like I'm kind of interested in building out my own quantified trading strategy, which I think everyone should do. That is maybe a, a good starting direction of like what to look at. Um, just want to share that with everyone. Uh, where are we at? Spy, spy, spy. All right, there's a spy on the daily. Uh, you guys send in a bunch of reacts, so we're going to be checking that out. Let me reload this just to give you the options data beforehand. Ugh, making me log back in making me log back in. All right, let's see. I don't like extended hours, don't need it. Uh, I just got a pop there at 1030. Big pop at 1030. Exciting stuff. Exciting stuff. Okay, hokey dokies, artichokies. Okie dokies, artichokies. Uh, okay, so the Apex stuff was there, if you guys care about that at all. If you don't, hey, no harm, no foul. Uh, the only thing I'm going to put up right now is uh, explaining to you why you need to get your butts in the Discord. It is free. And within the free month, I feel very, very strongly. I think within your first free month, you'll make enough money to pay for the entire yearly membership. So Here's just an example of yesterday. DGEN traded the day 93% for December 19th. Basically, uh, and I just show you all the evidence. So this was yesterday at 1022. Um, just some of the things I run in the background. There was a bullish signal uh, created for the SPY and the Qs. It was a three out of five strength. Um, and then right here, I gave what the strategy would actually be. A SPY put credit spread, a Q put credit spread, uh, selling the 472 and selling the 407 respectively. And then with this, I showed my own individual trade off of it. I sold five SPX put credit spreads. I got in at 75. I collected at five. So I made $70 per one. 70 times five is 350 bucks. The whole yearly membership is only $300 anyway. Um, so just want to show you that I put my money where my mouth is based on my own trading strategies. And then in the Discord, it's not this concept of like, oh, just trade the strategy. No, like I like to get into the math of it with everyone because we can work and improve the strategy. So for the ones that were called out yesterday, you got a $59 return for every $241 worth of capital. And then obviously you could scale it up as much as you want. So if you want to do eight units, okay, you just multiply this by eight. If you want to do one unit, it would just be these numbers. You could double it up. You could do two units. Risk $500 and get a return of 120. Um, so obviously it's up to you and your account and how you want to scale it. But I just wanted to show you evidence that I put my money where my mouth is. And honestly, if you took that one trade, you would be able to pay for the full year of the discord within the free month. 
So you would just be net ahead. Like this would actually functionally never cost you anything. The first free month, within the first free first free month, if you go up by 300, the full year is free. So you got a free month and then basically it paid for a full year. So obviously these are some of the types of things that go on in the week. On the weekend, we do specialty lectures for the upcoming week and also some advanced options talk of credit spreads, debit spreads, iron condors, iron butterflies, all that. That happens every single Sunday, obviously with the holidays coming up it might be a little bit wonky uh but just want that's commonly what happens on the weekends and then obviously there's a bunch of other traders in there discussing things throughout the day sharing their thoughts their opinions getting into the nitty-gritty of the best brokerage the best way to execute this that the other thing basically it's just a community of traders kind of doing this stuff together trying to figure out some edges together but there's definitely a higher end emphasis on like the math of it rather than just like, this is looking good. No, like most people in there, like we try to pull it out of everyone. I'm like, okay, what are the odds? What's the risk? What's the reward? What's the chance of this working? What's your true expected positive value? So if that's something that interests you, sign up for locals, macros at locals.com. And then that's how you could get connected to the discord. All you have to do is as soon as you are a supporter, click on this giant Goonie discord button right there. We could talk a bit about crypto, but before we get to crypto, dude, Bitcoin, 44K, Solana, 80 buckaroos, the SPY, 475.50, the Q's new all-time high of 410.50. Wow, we, wow, we. How much money do you need to get started? Well, on the one I just showed you, the to take all three units yesterday, you needed like 240 bucks, but you could scale it up. If you have 24K, you could have gotten a hundred of them. Like, so I try to, basically what I do, myself is in there. I'm trading an account that I use less than $5,000. Like just because I know it's easy, like right here, early this morning, the one account, uh, it was basically a million dollars worth of exposure. Not mo most people don't have a million dollars worth of exposure in the market like that. So in terms of the options trading, I'm using less than $5,000 worth of capital because I think that's more relatable. And then I show the unit sizing. Sometimes I scale up, sometimes I scale down, but obviously it needs to somewhat be agnostic. And that's why I present all the math in terms of units so you could scale it up accordingly. I show you the minimum unit requirement. So yesterday's was $240 for a $59 return. Um, so that was the minimum. And I think most people trading have at least 250 in their account. And if not, we could even find other ways to scale it down even more if that's the particular situation that you're in. Um, but the zero DT strategy has now been trading live for two months. Uh, it's very systematic. And it's to the point where I'm pretty sure it's like 98% done. So come the new year, I'm going to start building out an entire new strategy uh, just because it's fun and I like doing it. Uh, how do you do... How do you do them conditional orders? Uh, I don't quite follow. Could you try rephrasing it? How do you do them conditional orders? Conditional orders. Like stop markets? Like orders of... I, I guess I, I, I need a little bit more information to do my best to answer that one for you. And as I'm waiting for that, let's do some of the reacts that you guys sent in. I love that you guys are sending these in. It's truly, it's truly awesome. So keep sending them in. Uh, what is this one? All right, one, two, three, four. All right, this one. Oh, is this the Blackstone? Yeah, we already did this. This is the Blackstone. Oh, wait, is this a new one? Did Blackstone make a, a second one? Yeah, this. Yeah, we already covered that one. I remember. I don't want to cause people to do uh, feel all that cringe once again. Uh, but Blackstone did like a holiday video, and it was as as cringe as it possibly gets. Uh, ooh. Uh, what's the, dude? This guy is the guy who's like, I just don't believe in sickness. If you just don't believe you can get sick, you're you're not gonna get sick. Love this dude. So I'm sure we're gonna be able to learn quite a bit from him.
This guy's just so amped up. I'll take two of whatever he's on. Oh, it's not. Hang on. The sound's not coming through. Hang on. Let me reset it then. I mean, I think a lot of people read it, but I'll play it. This guy just gets me. Like I said, I'll have two of what he's having. A million dollars, 1993. Today is now $2,070,000. Inflation in five years will probably devalue half of everyone's money listening to this in their 401ks, IRAs, and their soft it's savings true, accounts. Actually. Um, like right now, the that world is always and being their only devalued. solution to the devaluation is they're going to have to work harder. Over the last 20 years, 2002 to 2022, salaries have increased 27%. But the cost of a home. I want to fact check that one. The twenty seven. In other words, the home one is right. Like our cost of living and lifestyles is not keeping up. Average person True. drives a sixty thousand dollar a year car. I want to fact check that one. Dollar year salary. Sixty thousand dollar car. Student debt. Is average. Of America living check to check. We have a problem. Sixty percent check to check. That's right. Being busy is not the solution, and getting another job is not the solution. You have to graduate and develop more of the Gen Z millennial mind that says there's got to be a smarter way. It can't be the immigrant way of just work harder because there is something to say for hard work but if it's not smart enough hard work then it's stupid work it's dumb work and there's a lot of financial idiots out there that have just not gotten themselves educated i mean usually he gives us something that is completely comedic but I, I really can't disagree on that one it's fair like you need to come up with something that's a bit more scalable right on mcdonald's what can I uh inflation in 2090 Welcome to McDonald's. What can I get started for you today? Uh, yeah. Can I just get a cheeseburger? Okay. Uh, is that going to be offered today? Yeah, yeah it's going to be offered today. All right. It's going to be $378.19. Well, actually, actually I, don't, I don't need the cheese. You can take the cheese off. No cheese? Yeah. Let's, let's do no cheese. No cheese. All right. That brings your total down to $312.17. That sounds better. That sounds better. All right. And are you going to be paying in full or will you be financing? Uh, yeah, I'll be financing today. Okay. Okay. Let's do the finance. All right, and after interest, it's your funny total will be sixty one dollars a month true. for six months. All right. Special window, please. Thank you. It's actually pretty good. It's funny because it's painfully true. I prefer the dirty, chaotic, rat-infested way of life here. Well, let's see what this is about. What the U.S. can learn from Japan. People waiting patiently. Suitcases waiting patiently. Trash bags waiting patiently. Trash bags with nets to prevent rats. Please learn, New York City. On time trains. Fast trains. Reversible seats on trains. Barriers to prevent train deaths. Please learn, New York City. Cheap groceries. Cheap alcohol. Cheap unvandalized vending machines. Cheap restaurants with no tipping. Please learn, America. Toilets that greet you. Toilets with instructions. Toilets that are public and clean. Please learn, America. Competing boy bands versus girl groups. Singing microwaves. Is this a thing? Singing microwaves? Creamia. Temple Fest. Hells yeah, Temple Fest. Less chance of getting murdered. Please <laughs> learn. What the U.S. can learn from Japan. Probably a couple things we could learn. That, that's fair. But it's America, brother. You know what? You know what my retort to that is? You know what? No one asks, but I'm going to show you my retort to what Japan can learn from America. I get it. Are there things that we could learn from them? Yeah, for sure. I'm not going to say that we can't, but if Twitter ever loads, if my Chrome ever, ever decides to work today, I'm going to show you a thing or two that they could learn from us. And luckily for you, I have the video right here God bless America and gentlemen. here's a couple things Start Japan can Jordan. learn and hell yeah brother hell yeah brother America fucking gets me fired up dude you guys thought my heart rate was higher before Write this down, Japan. <laughs> Fucking bleeding red, white, and blue right now. God bless our troops. God bless.
Yes, America! Dude, my Chrome is so slow. So that's, that's something arguably that they, they could learn from us. Men who look at the bill are broken, therefore can't afford uh, us high-quality women. Oh. How to tell if a guy is broke? Men who look at the bill too long are broke. Mm -hmm. If I'm on a date Preach and the guy reaches to pick up the check and doesn't immediately look over the bill quickly, put his card in, and call it a day, I will think that he isn't used to picking up the check regularly on a date, which will make me think that he actually can't afford it and has no money, which means he cannot afford me. You only need to look at the bill for about four seconds, and then that's it. How cool is it that we now live in a world where it's not just acceptable for the guy to pick up the check? You know, a little bit of chivalry. But now it's actually you're breaking some sort of unwritten rule of if you look at the check too long, you know, just take that concept of like being chivalrous and financial responsibility and I guess kick them out the window because now I guess you're broke if you simply look at a check. That that's that's our world, folks. That's crazy. Well, I don't like I'm not a, I'm not a fan. We're not friends. I am not friends with Brie. What is her name? Something the cheese. My eyesight is not good enough to see that. Um, yeah, no, I would not. I'm just not friends with her. Um, not friends with her. What is this one? All right. We have three more of these. Three more of these. And then we should talk a little bit about the markets because that's why we are here. Wait for Ozzy. Women weren't allowed to have credit cards until I think 75 or Fuck 76. Off. Women were not allowed yeah. to have credit cards. In this country until 75 or 76, you couldn't have a credit card. That was a good law. Wait. <laughs> Women weren't allowed to have credit cards. That was a good law. <laughs> credit card. That was a good law. Wait. Women oh, Ozzy. Oh, he's coming in. <laughs> That was a good law. <laughs> Parrot goes apeshit after man destroys his home. These kids should be in the reproduction, right? Yo, that's one pissed off bird. That is one pissed off avian. Jeez. <laughs> All right, what's this one? I'm a wedding planner. I'm a truck driver. I'm a librarian. I'm a school nurse. I'm a bank owner. I'm like a plumber. I'm the Kool-Aid man. So I'm Woody from Toy Story. I'm a bus boy, nigga. Welcome to Benny Honors. I'm the Olive Garden. I'm like a communist party. I'm a terrorist. I'm Dr. Strange. I'm Bubba Gump. I'm Mr. Belding. I am okay. the Pyramid. I'm a boombox. I'm a sawed-off shotgun. I'm Fred Krueger. I'm Jason Voorhees. I'm an ashtray when I play. I'm the kid who doesn't like to say goose. I'm a Chinese gymnast. We both Mexican. I'm Taiwanese. Gymnast. I'm a cracker. I'm a brother. I'm George Lucas and you're Jewish. You Jiminy Cricket. He a juice box. You Mason Bethel. You are a replacement ref. You David Blaine. You Harry and Dumb and Dumb. But your baby mother like the yellow starburst. I'm a little teapot. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! I'm a, I'm a wedding team. planner. I'm a truck. I really like the I'm the Olive Garden, but the I'm a Chinese gymnast. That one. <laughs> the I am Groot. That's fair. But I guess you can be anything you want in the world of battle rap. And hey, that's exciting. If you want to be a pyramid, if you want to be the Olive Garden, uh, seems like a lot is afforded to you. Uh, market stalling out a little bit. Uh, I mean, the queues were just ripping. The spy was just ripping and kind of ever since 1030, a little bit sideways checking in on the options market. Also the options market has just been sideways. So kind of moving in concert together on that one. RIP society. I am society. I am the societies. All right. I don't need this. I'm trying to get rid of as many, uh, Chrome pages as I can, because things have been getting slowed down. So load it down. All right. 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 Bitty bitty Bitcoin is breaking out to 44,000. All right. Let's see if this ever loads. I would love for this to speed up. I've clicked on the new tab. 
It just hasn't hasn't gone quite yet. It was thinking. I want to talk about some crazy stuff that is going on in the world of crypto right now. Specifically, how there's a new analyst price target on Bitcoin of $160,000, obviously, per coin in 2024. And then an even crazier story of how one lucky degenerate trader turned $450, $450 to over $2 million in less than two weeks. Some crazy stuff to get into. Bitcoin is interesting. Yes, to say the least. Bitcoin could reach 160,000 in 2024 on the back of the having spot ETF hype, according to one analyst. A slurry of catalysts and historical behavior could catapult Bitcoin to as high as 160,000 in a widely expected bull market that analysts say could be underway in 2024. Now, before we continue, I just want to give you a little bit of context. Right now, Bitcoin, for posterity's sake, is currently trading at 44,000, which puts the market cap at 863 billion. And crypto in totality is currently valued at 1.61 trillion. And also just for the short-term traders out there, Bitcoin actively breaking out on the daily chart. Nice eight-week push, then a healthy pullback. Nice consolidation with a very bullish EMA cloud. The push above, the close above, and it looks like we are off to the races. In the short term, I'm watching 45K, a break above that, then I'm watching 48. And then from there, we have the key technical and psychological level of 50,000. Once again, that's what I'm looking for in the short term because this is a nice, beautiful, bullish breakout. But going down to this whole 160K callout, Expected demand for Bitcoin from several spot exchange traded ETFs uh, in the U.S., the upcoming halving and growth in the broader stock market on the back of rate cuts could buoy Bitcoin prices to at least 50000 in the short term. Obviously, I do have a couple updates on the world of the spot ETF and what's happening there. We argue that Bitcoin and crypto markets could have a positive year in 2024, mostly amid the effects from number one, the market valuation cycle. Number two, network activity. Number three, the Bitcoin halving. Number four, the macroeconomic perspective. And number five, Bitcoin spot ETF approval. And six, growing stablecoin liquidity. So across the board, six things that are fairly like fair for you to consider that would all most likely increase demand. We know supply is not going to increase. So increase the demand, which should push the price higher. And then obviously on top of that, we see other things related in the world that continue to rip, rip, rip. If you want to see some crazy stuff, look at what's going on with Cardano, look at what's going on with Solana, look at what's going on with Avalanche. The crypto sphere right now, a lot of FOMO, a lot of fervor. Things are ripping to the upside. On-chain valuation and network metrics signal Bitcoin remains well inside a bull market and may be targeting 54000 in the medium term and 160000 as the cycle price top. Bitcoin has historically rallied after its having event, which automatically decreases the supply of new coins in the open market, and traders are likely to be pricing in that event that's next scheduled for April of 2024. So obviously, that's a big one. And just if history is any indicator of how the future will play out, yes, with the having event, you tend to see it going. It's just literally less supply. Like that's there's less of a reward. And right now, just culturally, societally, there's going to end up being more demand. But the other thing is the spot Bitcoin ETF. Before we get there, how crazy is this? I really, really appreciate these people who seemingly have such good vision of where markets and society is going. This was 13 years ago. Hal Finney predicting Bitcoin would become the global reserve currency at 30 cents. I see Bitcoin as ultimately becoming a reserve currency for banks, playing much the same role as gold did in the early days of banking. The reason I bring this up is, yes, I give you a little bit of technical analysis of where I think things are going in the short term. Breaking down what the analyst is calling for 160, the six things that he alluded to, that's more of a medium term. But take another step back of the big picture of where this is going. Well, it's fiat currency. The U.S. dollar is based on absolutely nothing. We were taken off the gold standard. And hey, maybe Hal in the long run isn't right. I think he will end up being right. But if even in the last 13 years, 30 cents to 44,000, you basically have unlimited money. Bitcoin spot ETF biggest development on Wall Street in last 30 years, according to Michael Saylor. A large increase in demand coupled with lower supply should set the stage for higher prices in 2024. And he has been making the rounds, a lot of public appearances talking about crypto and Bitcoin. And I just wanted to share some parts of his recent interview. 
And joining me is Michael Saylor. He is co-founder and executive chair of MicroStrategy. Of course, MicroStrategy, often seen as a Bitcoin proxy, it holds a lot of it on its balance sheet. MSTR Michael, great to owns see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, there has been so much anticipation and frankly, a lot built in, I think, to the price of Bitcoin of this idea that spot ETFs are finally going to come. What's the next catalyst for Bitcoin if and when that happens? How much further uh, can it be pushed upward? Well, I think you can't really underestimate the significance of the spot ETFs. Uh, it's not unreasonable to suggest that this may be the biggest development on Wall Street in 30 years. I mean, the last thing that was this consequential was the creation of the S&P index and the ability to invest in all 500 S&P companies via one trade at the same time. So uh, this is very eagerly anticipated, but most of the money in the in the Bitcoin market right now is is the hodlers and the traditional crypto investors, mainstream investors, mainstream retail, mainstream institutions have not had a high bandwidth compliant channel to invest. I just want to pause it right there to add a bit of context. As I showed you, Bitcoin currently worth 800 billion, the whole crypto sphere between one and two trillion as it gyrates. Remember. Upon the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF, that would allow the active management world of Wall Street to have access to Bitcoin. And I'm not saying every single dollar in that will go into Bitcoin or crypto at all, but it's a $30 trillion industry. So even if a small percentage is like, hey, I want exposure to crypto, think about what that does to the whole supply demand equilibrium. Invest in this asset class until these spot ETFs. So I think in January, the approval of the spot ETFs is going to be a major catalyst. It's going to definitely drive fully a demand agree. shock. Fully, fully, fully And then fully that'll be followed agree. in April with a supply shock because there are about 900 Bitcoin a day available for sale by natural sellers, the miners. And that number is going to be cut to 450 Bitcoin a day in Less April. Supply. So it's a, it's a Less supply, deal. higher demand, price goes up. And that puts... That's a good pause point because I do want to like add a bit more context on the whole spot Bitcoin ETF. BlackRock, Nasdaq, SEC meet regarding Bitcoin ETF. This is the second meeting in a month between the parties about rule changes required to list the Bitcoin ETF. Representatives from BlackRock and the SEC met for the second time in a month to discuss the rule changes that are necessary to list the Bitcoin exchange uh, ETF, exchange traded fund. The discussion concerned the Nasdaq stock market LLC's proposed rule change to list and trade shares of the iShares Bitcoin Trust under Nasdaq Rule 5711D. This rule establishes specific criteria and regulatory guidelines for listing and the trading of commodity-based trust shares because obviously uh, Bitcoin thought to be a digital commodity, not a security, on the Nasdaq exchange and detailing the requirements for initial and continued listing along with surveillance and compliance measuring to ensure market integrity and protection against fraudulent activities. So what's this mean in layman's terms? Well, you have about a dozen different companies who are now meeting with the SEC and other related parties even more frequently, which seemingly is being interpreted by the market that we will get this approval. And a lot of people are looking at mid-January. So depending on when you're watching this, literally less than a month away, we might have the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF. And just for those of you who want to know the nitty gritty, it'll probably take a handful of weeks after one uh, is approved to actually go live. Just want to throw that out there for anyone. But do you know who's betting on this actually going through? This whale, the 117th largest Bitcoin holder, bought 900 Bitcoin this morning for $39 million. This morning, big whale buying more buying more and more and more. Obviously, there's a lot of excitement, especially showing you the technical breakouts in the short term, the medium term, understanding what might be happening in 2024, and then in the larger picture saying, wow, monetary policy, inflation, devaluation of the dollar seems as if we need something else. So to me, that's a pretty reasonable way to look at it, but it's not the only way you can make money in this world. For example, you could be a complete degenerate and make more money than you ever imagined. This trader turned $450 into $2 million betting on Avalanche meme coin, Cock Inu. A pittance punted on Cock shortly after its issuance has yielded a massive return for one on-chain trader. This is crazy. So Avalanche, it's a new meme coin. This one's not a dog, it's hen-based. Avalanche is cock, a hen-themed 
token. Just so you, if you want to look into it, over the past seven days, it's ripped like no other, up 534%. It's truly wild. This is just meme mania. The token is for quote unquote, for entertainment purposes only. A fact that the developers aren't shying away from. Cock is a meme coin with no intrinsic value or expectation of financial return. There's no formal team or roadmap. So it's for entertainment purposes only. It's not meant to have any return. And yet someone made multiple seven figures. The coin is completely useless and for entertainment purposes only. Might be completely useless to most people, but someone figured out how to take advantage of it. A single trader apparently acquired just over $450 worth of cock shortly after its issuance, and the amount has since ballooned to over $2.5 million. The wallet has seemingly sold over $1.5 million worth of cock so far and sits on over $800,000 in unrealized gains. I would be lying if I told you I wasn't jealous. I wish I had a giant financial windfall from a meme joke internet troll event. I don't, I'm jealous. And uh, my hat's off to this absolute degen. Hats off. This is some high quality stuff. I want to let you know, most like most meme coins, this isn't going to end well. This isn't some long-term investment that will most likely continue to grow. It's a completely different thing. Um, the way Bitcoin could be compared to a solid blue chip stock, Apple, Microsoft, something like that. This is equivalent to a random penny stock that's just moving very volatilely. But if you look at most penny stocks, they end up horrifically failing. So I have none of this. I'm not going to have any of this. I just want to cover it because it's an eye-watering return. And if I'm being honest, I like the degeneracy. Makes me feel some sort of way. But if you decide to get involved, please just understand that there's a high chance of it blowing up in your face. So I hope you make money. I hope you make a ton of money. But also, if you're putting money on the table, be prepared for it to not come back to you. But still, 2.5 milli from $450. That's crazy. I guess, I guess some would call it a Christmas miracle. All right, where are we at, dude? Bitcoin's looking good. Solana's looking good. ETH. Not as good, lagging a little bit behind. In fact, you might be looking for a breakout on ETH today. Things are moving. Things are grooving. Q's kind of going sideways. Spy definitely going sideways. Solana looking good. Bitcoin looking good. Looking good in the hood. All right. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? I just want to make sure we're not missing any breaking news. Bay Fighters become the third union in the U.S. to purchase and hold Bitcoin on its balance sheet. Oh, Firefighters buying up. Jim Kamer just suggested a firm stock will short squeeze and drew multiple lines suggesting a firm will go to the moon. RIP a firm. Ooh. Ooh. That's a bit of a bummer. Bitcoin at high since December 9th, last up 4% to 44K. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Okay. Okity dokities. I think. That's all it. I'll give you a final look at the options market. Kind of going flat. Maybe a little bit of a downturn as we're seeing a slight downturn in the spine, the queues. But similar to yesterday, it might end up we popped and then we just kind of held there for the rest of the day. That might end up happening again. So um, don't get tricked into thinking just because we had a big move, it'll keep having a big move. Um, there is obviously such thing as volume exhaustion, price compression. So please consider that. But overall, folks, I truly, truly want to say thank you. Um, I have found this, for whatever reason, uh, this trading challenge to be particularly, I don't know, challenging, difficult. It's a lot of money in the short term. Uh, the rules are very difficult. And I don't know, I feel like I just kind of put myself out there letting you guys all know that I'm attempting to do it. And when you put yourself out there, there's always a chance of failure. And especially on the interwebs, you never know how that's going to go. So uh, very honestly, very earnestly, I do appreciate your support. Day three is in the books, 17 days to go. I started off with 56 units and now I'm down to like 33 units-ish that I need to go. So 33 units to go starting from 56 and 17 more trading days, three locked in. And really, I'm going to take it day by day, week by week, just trying to crush it tomorrow, Thursday, crush it, obviously, the day after on Friday. Then we all have the, really, the holiday break. It's going to be a three-day break. Then maybe coming back on, what is it, December 26th. I don't know. 
day, day by day, day by day. But overall, thank you. You guys are always bringing the great vibes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you want to join the Discord and hang out and trade with me for the rest of the day, it's pinned to the top of chat. It's in the description of the video. Don't forget to use the code Goonie. That's how you become a supporter for free. And I think within that first free month, you'll make enough money to pay for the entire year. That's just my prediction, but we'll see how it plays out. Best of luck in the market for the remainder of the day. We will be posting content later on tonight, uh, some update videos, also some shorts. And then tomorrow morning, we are going to stream early because we have the GDP report coming out at 8.30 a.m. ET. That's what I have for you. I hope you have a great day. Peace out.